Marine Corps General Frank McKenzie took command in Afghanistan just one month before Kabul fell. The end of America's longest war was already in motion. General McKenzie was the head of Central Command and took charge when the commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan left. In the weeks that followed, the Afghan military utterly collapsed. Taliban fighters swept across the country with lightning speed and easily seized the capital city. It was General McKenzie who negotiated a tense agreement with the Taliban to allow evacuations from Kabul's airport. And it was General McKenzie who was in charge when a nightmare scenario unfolded. Hundreds of desperate Afghan civilians overran the airport, and in the final days of the withdrawal, a suicide bomber killed 13 U.S. troops. NBC's Pentagon correspondent Courtney Cuby sat down with General McKenzie one year later to reflect on what went so wrong. I felt very strongly that we had the ability to keep a platform in Afghanistan at about 2,500. A year on since the withdrawal from Afghanistan, General McKenzie remains steadfast in his assessment that keeping 2,500 U.S. troops would have been enough to prevent the country's collapse. The position of U.S. Central Command in my position was that was a survivable number. We do know, however, what the alternative to that was which was withdrawal. We know as a matter of history that that was disastrous. The White House argued that if troops had been kept, U.S. forces would have found themselves at war with the Taliban. It is wrong to order American troops to step up when Afghanistan's own armed forces would not. Among the key prizes for the Taliban on their march to Kabul, Bagram Air Base, the nerve center for the U.S. military's decades-long war in Afghanistan. The U.S. quietly handed it over to the Afghan government in July of last year. Weeks later, Afghan forces would surrender it to the Taliban. I will note that at 2,500, though, we would have kept Bagram. After announcing the decision to withdraw in April, the White House publicly downplayed the risk that Afghanistan could fall quickly, despite intelligence assessments that suggested otherwise. As we pulled out, we began to lose our capability to see. We began, and we began to lose our ability to interact with our Afghan partners to learn what they were seeing. So it began to degrade pretty significantly. General McKenzie told me he thinks about the withdrawal every day. It's a year later, looking back, what would you have done differently? I wish we had begun to bring people out earlier. Uh, you always go back and you examine that. Wish we had seen that coming. I wish we had done that different. I believe that what happened in August of last year occurred when we decided to leave completely in April of that year. And once you make that basic decision, then events took on a certain trajectory. And that's, a, that's not a military decision, that's a political decision. General McKenzie is retired now. He's heading up the Global and National Security Institute at the University of South Florida, and that's giving him more time to reflect on what happened during this withdrawal last year. Another thing that concerns him, he says, is that now the U.S. intelligence picture in Afghanistan is so degraded from when there was a military and diplomatic presence in that country, he says now they only see about 2 percent of the intelligence that they had access to back before the U.S. withdrawal. Kelly? Courtney Cuby, our thanks. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.